Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I wanted to speak to you today about fibrocystic breasts. Sometimes it's called fibrocystic breast disease. It's really a condition, it's not a disease. Unfortunately, it does raise a woman's risk of breast cancer two to six fold, so it's definitely something not to ignore. It's extremely common, about 50% of all women between the ages of 20 and 50 will experience fibrocystic breasts. They present, they can be, uh, they present with a variety of symptoms. So they can be sore and tender. Uh, they can feel lumpy. They can feel full and inflamed. Uh, some women have, have an itchy sensation. Uh, it tends to worsen just before the period and uh, abate afterward. Even though it's common, as I mentioned, it raises your risk of cancer, so it's not normal. And you definitely want to do what you can to reverse it, and it is treatable naturally. So that's what I wanted to share. Personally, I had fibrocystic breasts. I don't anymore, um, and uh, my mother had them as well. So we, it's, it does tend to have a genetic predisposition. And I wanted to review with you what traditionally the medical profession does as well as uh, what we do to actually treat them. So um, medically women are often uh, sometimes they get a, an aspiration where there's a needle that drains fluid if it's very very uh, tender and sore. This does remove fluid and can make a woman who's who has a very tender cyst a lot more comfortable. Uh, however, needle aspiration does run the risk if there are any cancer cells in the area of spreading them. So it's, it's not necessarily something you want to do often. Also, because the breasts are so dense and um, hard to really appreciate uh, how much lumpiness is from fibrocystic breasts or if there is a tumor, uh, sometimes women start getting mammograms early in life. This is something I'm highly opposed to, not, not just me personally, but there's a lot of research to support it, that for every mammogram a woman receives prior to the age of 50, after menopause, we're using 50 as sort of that that uh, common age when a woman goes through menopause. After menopause, a woman's breasts are much less sensitive to ionizing radiation. However, premenopausal, uh, the breast tissue is highly sensitive. So you're actually someone who's more at risk for breast cancer with fibrocystic breasts, yet you're getting more mammograms to evaluate uh, the breast tissue, putting you even at a higher risk. So every time a woman under the age of 50 or premenopausal gets a mammogram, it raises her risk 1%. So if you start adding that up, some women start in their 30s with mammograms. Um, it's very common in this country to start in the 40s, although they did a landmark study and of 300,000 women uh, between the ages of 40 and 50 receiving mammograms and they felt that it increased in that decade it increased their risk 20 percent uh, to get breast cancer so uh, definitely not not a fan of that plus experientially not only with patients as well as with my own mom what tends to happen is you get a mammogram because the tissue is so dense and lumpy it's hard to decide as I said if there's a real tumor there or not sometimes they'll do one they'll repeat it and then the final analysis comes from an ultrasound which has nothing to do with radiation and that's when they often make their final designation so um, personally I just I've never re received a mammogram I just push for ultrasound um, and it took some pushing but uh, that's how I evaluated uh, my breast tissue so um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was actual treatment so what's interesting about in a woman's body is that each month when she's um, fertile her body is preparing for pregnancy and in the uterus the lining builds up and then if there's no conception the lining sheds and that happens over the course of, of several days the breast tissue also prepares for pregnancy and that's sometimes that fullness that a woman feels there's more cells multiplying but when the conception doesn't happen it doesn't shed as you know abruptly as as the uterus with the passage of blood those extra cells need to be broken down and removed from the breast tissue and there's two things that can affect that inflammation which is extremely common chronic inflammation is the root cause of all degenerative disease. We find um, many Americans are plagued with chronic inflammation. That's what's leading toward obesity, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, autoimmune disease. So 
inflammation is, is definitely very abundant in, in our country, even in our, our young um, young people, uh, male and female, of course, with the inflammation, but we're, we're mostly focusing on women right now. So the inflammation is a problem because you need the breakdown of those cells. Once those cells uh, are trying to be removed, uh, that requires the, the body's sort of cleanup system, and when you're already chronically inflamed, you're not going to do that cleanup very well. Also, the hormone progesterone helps with that cleanup process. So, women who are more inflamed and are deficient in progesterone are less likely to do that cleansing process well every month, and then more likely to get a buildup and, and get those fibrocystic breasts. To know if you're deficient in progesterone, there's certainly a blood test you can do, but also the symptoms common with progesterone are headaches, PMS, heavy period, cramping, trouble sleeping, and fibrocystic breasts, uh, irritability. So um, these are the symptoms associated with that. So if you see yourself there anywhere, you might very well be deficient in progesterone, which is quite common. So. Um, with treatment, what we like to do is, of course, make sure you're not too inflamed. So that's looking for any uh, food reactions you might have that's, that's uh, pushing inflammation. We want to evaluate uh, the progesterone level. We want to evaluate your adrenal glands. Now, your adrenal glands are your stress gland. And the adrenal glands make the precursor hormones that make the sex hormones, including progesterone. And in a very interesting response that the adrenal glands have to stress, when they have a lot of stress, they make more stress hormones and less progesterone. So that imbalance is something else that can move you toward fibrocystic breasts and deficient progesterone. What else? Let me see. Oh, exercise is very important um, for, uh, well, it's very important regardless, uh, but it's extremely important to get, um, to make sure the, the weight the body fat is under control, so obviously exercise helps with that because the higher your body fat, more inflammation, higher risk of uh, breast cancer. Also nutrient deficiencies, making sure your vitamin D, which is extremely common as a deficiency, making sure you have a nice healthy level above 60 of vitamin D, and also looking at iodine. So iodine is something you can get in supplements. There is iodized salt. It's they do some other things to the salt, making it not that healthy, so I prefer uh, to get it in the supplement form, uh, other than there's also seaweed if you're a fan. Uh, let's see what else I want to talk to you about. Good, keeping the weight under control. We talked about exercise. So that's our treatment plan that really reverses fibrocystic um, breasts. The evaluation, it's really funny in this country how they did this recent survey where they asked women, you know, what was the purpose of mammograms and it shows how good marketing is that women actually felt that if they got a mammogram, they decreased by 50% in this study, this is what these women said, they decreased by 50% their risk for breast cancer. Nothing could be farther from the truth. There's only one uh, death from breast cancer that is saved, only one woman saved from death of breast cancer out of 10,000 mammograms. So there's nothing therapeutic about a mammogram, it's an evaluation. So it's interesting how this testing is seen as some sort of um, a treatment instead of an evaluation of you know what's occurring and then of course not appreciating the negative side of it. So if you're a woman with fibrocystic breasts, if your breasts get very sore, they feel a little lumpy and bumpy, um, this treatment is something that can actually reverse them, which not only makes you more comfortable, uh, but really then takes your risk of breast cancer down as well. So I hope you found this informative. Uh, I'm happy to, if you want to reach out, we can dis discuss further what the best treatment plan for you would be with this. I suffered for a long time and then completely reversed mine, um, and we we do this for patients all the time. I think it's very important uh, we women worry about breast tissue, we worry about breast cancer, and this is something that can be addressed that really reduces your risk. Um, here at Health Now, we help the world's busiest people uh, regain, retain, and reclaim their health, their energy, their resilience, and I'm happy to help you do the same. Until next time.